Hi everyone, welcome to this Make a Medic tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about diabetic ketoacidosis. DKA is a really important complication of diabetes that requires prompt identification and management. To understand DKA, we must first look at how blood glucose levels are regulated within the body. So under normal circumstances, we have a certain concentration of glucose within the blood. The main source of that glucose will be our diet. So when we eat any meal that has carbohydrates in it, that'll be broken down and absorbed and it'll cause a rise in the serum glucose concentration. So this will then be detected by the beta cells of the pancreas, which produce insulin. And what insulin does is it pushes that glucose from the bloodstream into the surrounding cells. And it also encourages the storage of glucose as glycogen within the liver. We have a few hormones that can do the opposite as well. So growth hormone, cortisol, adrenaline, and notably glucagon, which is produced by alpha cells in the pancreas, can act to liberate glucose from the stores across the body and hence maintain our blood glucose concentration. So let's look at what happens in a starved state. So if we don't have enough intake of carbohydrates in our diet to maintain our blood glucose levels, those hormones that I mentioned earlier will liberate glucose from our stores, mainly the hepatic glucose store, to maintain our blood glucose level within an acceptable range. So we're able to function to some degree in a relatively starved state because of the action of these hormones. Furthermore, the muscles in our body are able to use fatty acids as an energy source to make sure that they can still continue to function. The brain, however, is a slight problem in this state because the brain is unable to use fatty acids directly as an energy source and so they need ketones to be produced by the liver via the breakdown of fatty acids before they can be used as an energy source. So this may be okay in the short term but it can cause major problems if ketones accumulate in excess. So let's see how insulin fits in to this whole schema. So when we eat any meal that contains carbohydrates, it'll be absorbed into our bloodstream and it'll cause a rise in blood glucose level. This will be detected by the pancreatic beta cells, which produce insulin. And what insulin does, as we mentioned earlier, is to promote the storage of glucose in the stores across the body and also to push that glucose into our cells. The glucose will then have a feedback effect on these beta cells. So as the glucose level starts to decrease, that'll reduce the release of insulin from these pancreatic beta cells, and hence it maintains the glucose within a set range. So just to summarize, one of the main effects of insulin is to push that glucose into the cells and also into hepatic glucose stores. However, one other effect is that it switches off ketone production. This makes sense given what we've just talked about because ketones are only necessary when glucose is in short supply. So if insulin is only released in the presence of high levels of glucose, then you won't need ketones because there'll be enough glucose for the brain to use as an energy source. And hence the insulin stops ketone production. And this really is the basis of DKA. So in DKA, which primarily happens in type 1 diabetics, patients are unable to produce insulin from their pancreatic beta cells. So if they can't produce enough insulin, it has two main consequences. First of all, there's nothing pushing that glucose into the cells and into those hepatic glucose stores. And so the glucose concentration in the blood will rise. Secondly, the inhibitory effect that insulin had on ketone generation within the liver has been removed and hence the ketone concentration of the blood will increase considerably. So the term diabetic ketoacidosis summarizes exactly what's going on. Diabetic, meaning high glucose, ketoacidosis, meaning high ketones. The treatment of DKA makes sense if we think about the consequences of having high levels of glucose and ketones. So to begin with, let's focus on glucose. The problem with glucose in this instance is that it is osmotically active and hence high concentrations of glucose in your blood and hence in your filtrate results in water being drawn into your urine and you end up peeing a lot of your fluid out and that, as expected, results in dehydration. The problem with ketones on the other hand is that they are acidic. 
they are keto acids, and hence they create a state of metabolic acidosis which affects enzyme function across the body and can in severe instances result in coma and even death. So on that basis, we can figure out what the aim of DKA treatment is. So we have two things we need to sort out here. We need to rehydrate them, and we do that using IV fluids, and we need to switch off ketone production, and we do that using insulin. Because as I mentioned earlier, insulin under normal circumstances will switch off ketone production. Music